Hello and welcome to this video on Emacs X Window Manager. Uh, I've tried BSPWM and I decided it was just another tiling window manager. Um, it's fine, it's good. If you want to use it, use it. Um, and I thought I'd look into uh, EXWM, which is essentially just Emacs um, tiling manager. Well, it's just Emacs as your desktop, essentially. Um, so, uh, what we're looking at here, by the way, is I've installed Ubuntu 20.04, uh, just the standard install, installed updates while it was installing, all those things. Um, this is the uh, repository for EXWM. Uh, and if we look at the user guide, uh, pages, user guide, um, there's, it's got a really good resource for figuring out what to do um, to get things working which I will reference in the description. Um, today, the things that I want to get working, um, I want to install Emacs as a start. I want to get the EXWM package installed and uh, with default EXWM configuration. Um, and I want to be able to log in to the Emacs session from the login screen. Uh, and then I want to add, uh, go away. I want to add Malper use package and which key just to get started. So, what we will need here is a terminal. So, it's worth noting that um, you have to install Emacs. You don't have to install Emacs. You have to install the apt version of Emacs. Um, the the um, snap snap doesn't work. I tried. It doesn't work for this. I don't know why. I might look into it in the future, but equally it's fine. I'm just going to use the app version because it's probably a bit more stable because it doesn't uh, update as frequently. I think that's fine. Um, so install Emacs, and when this is done, um, we will, yeah, we'll we'll get EXWM, uh, the EXWM package installed. I did have a bit of an issue getting EXWM. Um, install in Emacs uh, before, but we'll have to see if it happens. I just tried a few times and then it seemed to work. I don't know whether it was a network issue or what, but it just seemed to stop halfway through because what it does, it needs to pull stuff, uh, it needs to pull a few projects down and a few files down and compile them. Um, so it, it just got confused at some point, I think. I'm not, yeah, it was probably network. As you can see, the network's pretty hammered right now because Everyone's in lockdown, working from home and streaming Netflix and playing games and all that kind of stuff. So things are a bit slower. It should install fairly quickly. Now this is running in a VM as well. So that'll slow it down a little bit, but I've given it a fair chunk of RAM. It shouldn't be too bad. Okay, Emacs is installed, so we should be able to Emacs. Let's have it in the GUI. Uh, the Emacs we know and love. We just open up Emacs. And, um, well, actually, what do we want to do first? We don't actually want to open that yet. What we want to do is we want to package refresh contents, just to update Alper. See, this is the issue I had before. Package update. Con package update. Refresh contents. Fail to download. Archive. Okay, let's close it. And let's try again. This is what I had before. And I didn't really do anything to fix it. Let's just open, like, um, test.txt. Test. And then package refresh. Ah, I remember why. You need to package initialize and then and then package refresh contents. Hey. Um I always forget that. So package install uh, and we want EXWM. So it's part of Elpa, which is handy. 
So as you can see, it's compiling, downloading, compiling a load of stuff. I did also have an issue when doing this as well. So we'll just see what happens. I may have to just, um, I think the last time I just closed Emacs, the reason I just tried closing Emacs and opening it again, trying again is because I think that's what worked for this when this failed, but we'll just have to wait and see. Getting a lot of stuff, like CB. Man, it is on it. Um, I'm also hoping with this that um, we can kind of converge our uh, my Emacs config that I currently use day to day with uh, my window manager. That's the dream, right? And one of the reasons for doing this is I want to um, get to be able to use uh, Emacs key bindings everywhere. So I haven't actually figured that out yet. Obviously, I've run through this just to see that it you know roughly get it working so i don't have to fiddle about too much uh, in this video um but there's various things that i haven't figured out yet that i know are possible that i just haven't figured out yet and i will um as as this series goes on so hopefully we're nearly done with this we're on to t now we're on to x xcb dash x x is late in the alphabet Although I imagine there's probably quite a lot of X things. Xfixes.el, that sounds useful. Da, 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 da. We're nearly there. Let's move this over here actually because we're going to need the terminal. Um, can we do anything else while we're waiting for this? I guess we could. Well, let's wait. It's fine. Well, no, let's do it. So we want to uh, sudo. So we need to create the um, the X sessions uh, desktop file. So we need user share X sessions, and then we'll make emacs.desktop. So this should load up in another Emacs window. Great. Um, so we just need to dis define a desktop desktop entry. Uh, and it's gonna the name I'm gonna call it Emacs. Uh, it's gonna e execute Emacs, and it's of type application, uh, and that's it. So that's done. So we've made that file while we wait for for exwn to compile. We're still on the X, nearly there. Do we need this for anything else? I think actually now we can uh, get rid of this terminal. Um, we can have a look here quickly. Oh, there we go. Tar bad request. So this happened before. So let's just run it again. And is it going to compile everything again? No, it's a lot quicker. Okay, done. Okay, so that's that done. I can kill that buffer. Uh, if I open Emacs. Uh, we've got our custom stuff set there. Um, so we need to package initialize, first of all. Uh, we need to require exwm, and we require the exwm config uh, so that we can set configuration options. But then we're just going to use the default configuration for now just to get started. Um, I think that's all we need. So at this point, I should technically be able to log out. Close tabs. That'll remind me later, that's fine. Uh, log out, and I should be able to choose Emacs from the login window. So let's wait and see. Black screen. It's always a worry, isn't it? We're good. So down here, I should be able to select Emacs, put my password in, and hopefully, Aha, here we go. It's loading. It's figuring itself out. So this is the kind of loading screen. It kind of just goes blank and just has for more information. Type this. Um, but when it does finally load, it should go full screen. It's taken a bit of time. And there we go. Full screen Emacs. Um, so it's worth noting at this point, you might be like, oh, what do I do? So to exit back to your login screen you just as you'd quit emacs you just do control xc uh, and that'll quit emacs so really exit i'll say no 
Um, and to start uh, an application, you use super and ampersand. So for me, it's super shift seven. And you see at the bottom there, you get dollar, and I could say Firefox. And Firefox should load. All good so far. Uh, you do have workspaces, so you can use exwm workspace switch, and you'll see that zero by default is selected, and then you can say one, and it'll go to one. You can also use the super key, like in most window managers, and use one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And zero so zero by default is the one that starts by default but we can change that and i will look at that probably in another video but for now let's just go back to the first workspace and you just open files as you normally would um so we want our emacs file and in here let's um add to list package archives Mail for stable I've probably done a typo in there somewhere, but let's execute it anyway. And then package refresh. Ooh, contents. So hopefully I'll get go to Melpa. It's done, so let's um, package install use package. And hopefully, yeah, it's getting use package. Great. So, use package is now installed. So, down here, we can start doing uh, use package, which key, ensure T, config, which key mode. Now, as before, we can just do this, it should run. And then, if I control X, yeah, which key is working? Great. Um, and we also, I don't know, they're the two things we want to do. So that's it. We've got exwm running. As you can see, everywhere you have the command line, you can also split windows uh, however you want. So this is on a workspace. I've now split to two windows to display two buffers. Uh, if I go to workspace, uh, so I just moved that to workspace one, did I? Oh no, what am I doing? Workspace one. I'm still learning, like getting used to the key combinations as well. Um, but in here, if I control XB, as always, I can type Firefox. And it should, I thought, I thought it normally switch. It should switch to it. Maybe it doesn't. Interesting. I thought it would. Maybe it doesn't for um maybe it doesn't for non Emacs buffers. I don't know. I need to investigate some more. Um and you can see here it's EXWM is the major mode and actually it's quite useful. You can click that and you can see various things like you can make it floating, full screen, you can remove the mode line. Um yeah, it's quite a few useful things, so it's worth investigating. Uh, let's switch to workspace one. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's that's pretty much it for now. Um, that's all you need to get running. And then obviously uh, there are various things you can do. You can install the themes, like I've already done a video about uh, for normal Emacs. Um, and there are a few other EXWM specific things that I'll cover in another video. Uh, but I just thought I'd quickly do this now because I, I had a bit of time over lunch. Um, and that's it. So thanks for watching uh, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Bye. Mm.